My dear brothers and elders, our deen obviously is not just based on a few acts of worship. Alhamdulillah, it's a complete way of life. And many of us sometimes fail to understand it, that there's, honestly, there's very few things that our deen has not encompassed. Literally, if you want to know how to deal with children, you find a hadith, there's something in the Qur'an, something in the lives of the Salaf al-Saliheen. If you want to know how to do business, if you want to know how to be a leader, everything is mentioned. One of the things which, as I mentioned before, is which we come across in our daily life is mu'amalat, our social dealings, interactions, mu'ashara, social interactions, mu'amalat, our dealings. One of the things which is very, very important, which nowadays it's, we, it's good to learn about, because where we can build up, uh, as we say in Urdu, بلاتكلف, sometimes you become a bit, un, a bit re, 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 unreserved, so to say. So it's good to touch on these things. Anyway, what I'm specifically talking about is one Sahabiya radiallahu anha, she was a bit concerned because she used to co-share the house with family members, brother and so on, other male members. She was concerned that, you know, I, I feel sometimes unease that anyone can walk in on me at any particular time. So she was a bit concerned. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeing her sort of bejani, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala sent down the verses which we find in Surah An-Nur. And the verses I, as I just briefly mentioned, that, Ya ayyuhaladheena amanu la tadkhulu buyutan ghayra buyutikum. First of all, don't enter any house except your own houses, hatta tasta'nisu wa tusallimu ala ahliha. First you seek permission, and then you make salam upon the inhabitants of the house. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in relation to that, He says, ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ Doing this particular thing where you say salam to the people, you only enter once you've been given ijazah and so on, this is part and parcel of the good Islamic character, it's better for you if you understand such a thing. And it mentions, If for example a situation arises that you don't find anybody answering back, responding, then don't just enter into the house. And if it were to be said to you, and if someone in the house says to you, go back, then go back. It's more better for you, more pure for you, and so on. Anyways, what am I trying to draw from this? One of the, as I touched upon a couple of weeks ago, my mozu was, don't give taklif to anybody. A big usul in our deen. It's a big part of our deen. This is a part of that, inshallah. Where, where what happens is, is quite common, where when we go to see people, we don't see people with the correct etiquette and we don't display the correct adab and ad manner. Let me explain to you something. You know in the Ottoman Empire, the Khilafat of the Osmaniyya, the Ottomans, but have you heard of Ardugurul? Anyone here watch Netflix? No? Chalo, okay, fir. I can't give you examples on Star Plus because I don't watch all these dramas, but Erdogan has become a really big hit. Anyway, right, what it is that the Turkish Muslims, if you look at, for example, now the, the Turk is a qawm of people, and they formed what we know as the Khilafat the Uthmaniyya or the Ottoman Empire. Have you heard of Ottoman Empire? Khilafat al Uthmaniyya. Listen to this. It's the longest surviving Islamic empire in the history of our history. More bigger than Banu Abbas, more bigger than Banu Umayyah, bigger than Salahuddin Ayyubi, bigger than any Islamic empire. The Khilafat the Usmaniyya was the biggest. And it finished in the 1920s. 1924, if I remember correctly, Allah forgive. Anyway, they had this concept. You see, because in our, in our Mu'ashara of Muslims, we look at everything so fine. Some people may say, why are you, why are you so finicky of these small things? Why do you latch on to these small things? That's what makes us who we are. That's what makes us who we are. That we've, to this small thing that Muslims I advise, how to go to someone's house, how to address yourself, how to knock on the door, how to speak, all these things, there's nothing left to chance. And it's these small things that makes us different in terms of a people, in terms of a nation, in terms of a deen, than anybody else. I challenge. Open any madhab in the world, any religion in the world, and, and see if they've got exactly what we've got. They haven't. Otherwise, that would be more practical than Islam. They haven't got it. And that's not me trying to be superimposing my beliefs on others. If you want to accept that way of life, then it's up to you. But for me, Islam is the most logical, rational choice I can make. Because everything has been described to me. Everything has been told to me. Anyway, 
What happened in the Khilafah of the Osmania? They used to have commonly, doors became slightly more common and what they used to have, they used to have one big handle and one small handle, side by side. If a man went to knock on the door, he would knock using the big handle. Then the men at home would know, Man has come, open the door. And if you heard like a little lighter knock, you would know, okay, there's sisters at the door. Then you would send the women for, there's sisters at the door. You know, itni riayat, itni riayat, even down to these small things. If, if for example, now someone, uh, you know, if, if, if you knocked on the door, a woman opened the door, she may feel a bit uncomfortable, a bit embarrassed, a bit uneasy. So, if it's a man, then a man can open the door. If it's a woman, then a woman can open the door. To, to this small, you know, they used to look at the small details. Bhai, phir bhi log kahenge ke bhai, why are you so obsessed with these small details? Because these are the things that made us who we were. It's these things that made us who we were. How, what do we pride ourselves on? What? How, if we, we look at each and everything, حقوق العباد, حقوق العباد, حقوق العباد, the rights of people, the rights of people, and we try to fit and give the best to people. That's what a Muslim really, really is. Now, just look at that for a minute. As I said, this verse was revealed because of that Sahabiya. She was concerned. Okay, people are coming in and out of homes. So then the Islamic adab was what? Is that <clears throat> you're not supposed to enter any house that is not yours until two things. You knock or you seek ijazah, and you give salam. You seek ijazat and then you give salam, number two things. And then also in addition to that, if you don't find anybody there, you can't just walk into the house. You can't just walk in and help yourself just enter, no. That's against the Islamic adab. Re 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 walk away, return, and then come back at another time if needs be. Now why am I mentioning this? Here in the, in the UK, it's slightly more different because the, the housing system and the way we built up houses are different. They're, as we say, where you, knock, you go to someone's house, you knock on the door, or you press a buzzer, or there's something, or you have a voice system, Asalaamu Alaikum, yeah, it's Abdullah, it's Muhammad, it's so-and-so, it's Billu and Shillu, but then you, you know, you, at least you can say it on the receiver. Okay? But where, where this is a big qasur, which I felt personally, or I was studying in Pakistan and I come across this massively, and it still happens to this day, where my grandmother, she had this house, right, and she still got it, may Allah preserve her and, and obviously the family inhabitants as well, where they had, we, uh, it's, it's, it's quite a relatively large house, alhamdulillah, and what would happen is, is that I remember a number of times, I would just be walking through the house and all of a sudden, oh mashallah, where did you come from? Achanak, people would just turn up. Asalaamu Alaikum Janab, oh, oh, get away, oh, get away. Like people have just come, like, like 10 people just turn up and you, you know, well, alhamdulillah, we welcome the people to the home, but it's like, bro, can you send a little, like a phone call or something that 10 of us are turning up to your house? Or what happened? And then, gee, Janab, I have to drop everything. And alhamdulillah, we, we, our, we were taught, our part of our culture, an Islamic culture as well. And let me just add this in. There's nothing wrong with culture, so long as it doesn't go against deen. Some people think that I'm against culture. I'm not against culture. I'm against anything which goes against Islam. So for example now, like for example me wearing this libas, this is a cultural libas, which is more close to the sunnah. I'm not going to look down upon you because you're wearing something different. So that would then, you know, so don't, don't, someone thought this, that he, I'm against culture. I'm not against culture. I'm against anything that goes against Islam in the name of culture. That's what I'm against. But this is a kusur. This is a problem. You just turn up on someone's door, say, ba alaikum janab. And then like five people turn up to, and then you can't say to your brother, sorry, can you come back tomorrow, please? Oh, but they don't even come back again. And then they become, they make a laugh. He went to the house, they didn't even give us any food. They just told us, they tell us to go. And then this creates family breakups. This be, why this happens is the nawaqfiyat of the usul of deen. Islamic adab is such, if you want to go to someone's house, first and foremost, there's no harm. Just to let them know in advance if you can do that. And even when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and you know, like the people used to go out ghazawat and battles and so on, when they would return, they would go to the masjid first of all, and they would let the women folk know, "Okay, we're we're here." Why? Because then it's possible that if you've been away for one month, two months, a certain amount of time, perhaps your wife, your your woman at home is in a condition which is not probably the most nicest, so to say, because generally. Obviously, if, you're, if you've got a certain mizaj that you want your missus to look a certain way, if you go home and she's looking nasty, you know, her hair's all disheveled, she's looking butters, right? It's going to put you off her. So it's part of the adab that you let them know that I'm coming home. So if you're looking a bit mash up, fix yourself up a little bit. And for you also to fix yourself up, it's not a one-sided thing just for the man. It's for the woman as well. 
the Prophet ﷺ, he would walk in the home, he would start with miswak, he would always smell good. So these are part of the, our Islamic teachings. Similarly as well, you want to go to your own home, it's not wajib to, but it's part of our teachings. Uh, I'll, I'll touch on this in a second, but first and foremost is that, why is this important for us? Because to give taqlif to anybody is haram. Now when you turn up at someone's doorstep and knock on the door, and sometimes knocking is one thing. As I mentioned to you, my personal experience, which I had not once, dozens of times, which has led me to say something, I know that that is more applicable there, but for us, we can relate this to our relatives abroad, because some of you have relatives abroad, most of you if not in fact, and if not, then at least we can try and inshallah build some of this more into our lives. Like I said, what happens? You just bowl into someone's house, na salam, na kalam, na jangin, na mandi, you just walk through the door, assalamu alaikum janab, we're here. And mashallah, I mean, it's like all of a shock. Like, I haven't seen you for like six months and all of a sudden you come with like yourself, five bags. And some people stay for two to three weeks as well without even announcing. But why is this a problem? As I said, because it's giving taqlif to somebody and giving taqlif difficulty to someone. Ida is haram in Islam. It's difficulty. And you're not supposed to do that in any way, shape or form. Based in addition to that is... Also, seeking ijazah is good because it protects the women at home. They're not, they're not mahram women. Maybe they don't want to be seen in a, in a condition which they are. Because let me just say this clearly. If this is you and your missus at home, and she's not expected to sit there wearing full hijab, and you know, she can dress how she wants to in our own home, right? It's permissible. And I know some of you guys, if you've got a little bit of a fetish on look, or women dressing a certain way, get your women or wife to wear like that. Baikui gunani, yeah. If you like a woman dressing a certain way, get your missus to dress like that. It's better that your woman wears a certain way, that you look at her and you get ajr for it, rather than looking at someone in the office. If you like your woman to dress a certain way, ask her, dress a certain way, or you should dress a certain way as well. There'll be some love as well, there'll be a bit of spice between your life as well. These are important things. But you need to have a good relationship with your wife. So if you like her dressing a certain way, خلاص, let her dress that way. Encourage it. Let her encourage you. But naturally, if you're in a position, like me, when I'm at home, I generally dress in lungi and a t-shirt. Generally. If you see me, you'd think, but then you'd, you'd, you, I literally dress in a very ragged way. Sometimes I always wear leather socks. But generally, lungi, t-shirt, or a kameez. Now, if I've got someone coming to see me, I'm not going to sit rago in a t-shirt. Maybe sometimes, you know, like, or looking a bit disheveled. And I might just put on a quick job, I just look in the mirror, I look semi-decent, now I want to introduce myself to people. Okay? It's part of human nature. I don't always want to look so tip-top. But naturally, if I've got people just walking into the home, subhanallah. You know, I know why this is an issue, because there was, a, in the joint family systems we have, where, where people get married and they're married into families. I know of one sister who contacted me because her, she had an argument with her husband. Because she came out of the bath wearing uh, just a, a, a towel. She didn't know that her father-in-law had a key. So he came in the house. Now, she's exposed herself, semi about to expose herself, and the father-in-law walks in. Can you see what happened now? That's khatarnaq, that's dangerous. So she flew into a rage that, don't you know to knock on the door? Don't you? So then she said to him that, the husband kicked off with her. Who the hell do you think you are speaking to my dad like that? It would have sold from the problem if you just pressed the buzzer and said, and, and you know, that much you've done, knock on the door, say a salam, and okay, you've given them a key, so there's an understanding that they can come in, there's a mutual understanding. When you open the door, Salaamu Alaikum, is anyone here? I'm here, it's Abdul Majid, it's Abdullah, it's Zaid. But he just thought, lock himself in, not even assalamu alaikum. He's just walking around the house and then boom, he sees his daughter-in-law semi-naked, half sitting, hanging out, and then he kicks off. Tell your wife like this, and then she kicks off with the husband, the husband kicks off with her, the family, wallahi qasam, it nearly, the, nearly the marriage broke up because of this. And it may sound radical, it may sound radical, but our people, because now she said something in the fit of anger at her, her father-in-law, the son took the father's side because he said, how dare you speak to my father? This is a matter of izzat. She felt left out because you're supposed to be protecting me. This is my house. So from three, ang he was saying, how does my dear, I'm, no, I'm supposed to ask you Jaza to walk into your house, am I? You know, so it's not a personal thing. Islam has taught us this, yard. This is why I say, I said this is why I said in the beginning, our culture is the problem sometimes. Not Islam, Islam is perfect. Our culture is what they, they can come, go in and out. We want them to, but with a certain manner. There's a way how to do it. 
If you give someone a key, I'd, you know my mother, she gave me a key, right? And I, I explained this to her in a number of times, and I, I knocked on the door, firstly. I, I needed to grab something, because I had some saman at her house. I knocked once, and the adab is, the sunnah adab, you knock once, and then you wait a second, and then you do it a second time, then a third time. Abu Sayyid Khudri radiallahu anhu, Bukhari Shiri Rewayat, he mentions, إِذَا اسْتَأْذَنَ أَحَدُكُمْ ثَلَاثًا فَلَمْ يُؤْذَنْ لَهُ فَلْيَنْصَرِفْ If you go to someone's house and you seek ijazah three times and you do not get a response, return. That's the adab. Now, I was given ijazah by my mom, you can come in any time. But I did what I did, knocked first. Waited 15, 20 seconds. And why 15, 20 seconds? Because I thought, if she's up in one of the rooms, it will take her that long to come downstairs. Second time knock. If she's in the garden, she'll be able to make her way by then. Third time knock, no answer. Then I let myself in. So she said to me, she kind of got a bit, she goes to me, when I gave you a key, why you got to keep on knocking on the door? And I said, mum, it's part of the adab of Islam. This is part of deen. Because it's possible, quite possible, you may have been in a condition that it wouldn't have been nice for me to see. And it's part of the adab and the etiquette of deen. So alhamdulillah, it's a good opportunity for us to explore. But do we even know these etiquettes? Even the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when he would go to someone's house, and he would nowadays we got door knocking, so it's a bit different. But when you call someone out, salam alaikum, is is this person? It's good to make your presence known, who you are. Let them know, not just knock on the door. One Sahabi went to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's house, and he said, "Assalamu alaikum." He went, "Who are you?" He went, "Ana." He just said, "Me, male. It's me." He mentioned, "Ana, ana, me, me." Yani ka'annahu karihahu. It was as if the Rabi mentions he didn't like it. He don't just go. Oh gee, it's me, it's me, it's me. Who's me? Who's me? They like, say it's Abdullah, say it's Abdul Majid, say it's Sajjad, say it's Khalid, say it's Farid and Padri Kya Kya. Say your name, Akhi, tell them who you are. Like if I can say, brother, can you come back in a minute? I'll call you in 10 minutes, come back in five, sit in the car, sit in the house, let yourself in. You know, so part of the adab. Finishing off because obviously time has finished. And obviously, I uh, just want to finish off one particular thing. What is the manner of rhythm between husband and wife then? That's the last point I want to touch on. If it's your house, it's just you and your missus, you, what are the Islamic etiquettes? Uh, the the, the masla is, it's not wajib to seek permission from your wife, right? But it's still part of the adab, that if you just knock on the door, and then maybe let yourself in, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, she can tell from your voice, or kone. You know, it doesn't lose the mana here because she doesn't know who's coming in her house. So when you knock on the door, Salaamu Alaikum Rahmatullah, she they know you're there. And personally, this is the method I adopt. I come, I, I just I, I I flick the, the door and then I let myself in. Assalamu alaikum rahmatullah and then I let myself in. So then they know. Give each other he's here. Alhamdulillah. And with the grace of Allah, I've always done this and I share this with you. Whenever I'm on journey or anything, I always let my wife know my time of arrival. Okay, I'm gonna be home eleven PM, half ten, twelve. It's not about, about being a murid. It's about letting them know, okay, I'm coming home this time. You have a haq to know. I have a haq to also tell you. So these are, the, by these are some very simple Islamic adab. We finished because obviously time changed this week. But I'm gone over anyway two minutes. Let's stop here. SubhanAllah wa bihamdi. SubhanAllah wa bihamdi. Allah give us tawfiq to make amal inshallah.